people, Multiplier here, and in this video we're looking at Ableton and taking things back to basics, Rip, spin back, spin back, rewind, etc. all that sort of stuff. Um, yeah, all about basically how to manually send your Ableton project file to somebody else such that they can open it without loads of error messages appearing. Because if you don't know what you're doing and it's not obvious genuinely until you've seen how it works, you can send your project file to somebody and be like, yo, let's work on this dope tune. Let's make some bare things. And then they open it and nothing pops up or there are loads of media files missing or whatever even that means. Anyway, we're gonna get into all of that in this video. Now it's worth saying if you are doing collaboration and you're sending a lot of files backwards and forwards and working on the same track with somebody, it's probably better to use Splice, full disclosure, I have done work for them in the past, but they're not paying me to say that. Um, I wish they were because I like money. If you want to send me some money, feel free. But genuinely, Splice is the best place for collaboration in terms of like sending lots of stuff backwards and forwards, making changes, seeing revisions, all that kind of good stuff. But if it comes to just sending a one-off Ableton project file that you want to do independently of any other software, I'm going to tell you how to do all of that right here, right now, right now. So we have Ableton here with nothing in it. Let's load up some samples just like we would in an actual track. So we will have a loop. Oh, oh, there it is. We will insert a loop. We will loop it like that. And there you go. Let's pretend that's our entire track. Nope, let's have an instance of Massive as well or any plugin because that's an important thing to be aware of. So we will have Massive, bing. So load it up cool sweet so what we've got here is a project with samples and plugins in it what do we do how do we save it in such a way that we can send it over to somebody else well let's first of all give it a normal save so we will save it to the desktop file save as and i will stick it desktop and i will call this dope tune Dope tune, and there you go, we've saved it to our desktop. Now, what's actually happened is if we have a look on the desktop, we can see there is a dope tune project, which is actually a folder in your OS, your operating system. And in this folder, there is a live set. So sets are contained within projects, projects are project folders. And then there is a whole bunch of Ableton project info. However, our sample that we have in our dope tune isn't actually contained in that project file yet. What's happening is when we play back this thing in our project, what it's actually doing to play back that sample is it's looking to where it knows that sample is on my hard drive. So it's almost like a pointer. It just knows where to look on my hard drive to find that loop. The downside is if I move that sample pack about on my computer, then this pro this particular project here is gonna look for it. It's not gonna be there and it's gonna go mental and not know what to do because there's going to be a missing file basically. So what we need to do is actually bring that sample into the project so that we can move the project about or send it to somebody else and all the samples are with it. If we don't do this step, you will see something at the bottom that will say media files missing. So this is in fact something you want to do all the time, just get in the routine of doing what we call a collect all and save. Because what that does is it actually not only saves the project, but it collects all the samples into the project. So you can move the project about at a later date or stick it on a hard drive, whatever you want to do. You can basically move it about without any issues and ting. So we will do file, collect all and save. Um, and then we'll show you what that does. So this is important. It says specify which used media files because that's a used media file. Yes, 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 and so on. Just basically bring everything in. You might as well. So we'll hit OK. Sweetness. And now if we look at this project folder, we can see there's a new thing. Look at that. Samples, imported samples. And there we have that XF loop, which wasn't there before. So now within this project folder, we have the samples to work with, which is cool because it means we can then move the project about and it's fine. Everything we need for the project is contained within that ting right there. So there is more to know though, however, and that's why I loaded up Massive because if we're using plugins, what we should do, even if we think that person has the plugin, is actually freeze that plugin before we actually send it over. So let's draw in a bit of MIDI. Let's just say we draw in something amazing like that, better than any, any Dead Mouse song you've ever heard. So we've got a bit of complicated, incredibly advanced MIDI right there. What we want to in fact do is right click freeze that track. And what that does is it writes out that entire track to audio. So that's now an audio file. It doesn't have to work out what's being played as you hit start, which is cool. And now notice what happens if we look at the project folder again, we have more stuff under processed freeze. And there you go, we've actually 
basically got the WAV file that we've frozen out or basically written out to audio. But the reason why that's pretty cool and the reason why I say you probably want to freeze all your plugins, even if you think there's a chance your friend you're sending it to or your other collaborator you're sending it to might have that plugin, is there's just no harm in doing so because let's say we send this project to, I don't know, somebody else, awesome person X and or awesome artist Y, whoever it is, doesn't really matter then what they can do, if they have Massive, they can actually right click and unfreeze the track and it reverts back to the stage before Frozen. So you can they can make changes to the MIDI, make changes to the automation, stuff like that. However, if they don't have Massive, what they could do to still work on the project file is look at the MIDI, work out, or look at the MIDI and then maybe load up that MIDI into a different instrument. Or if they want, they can actually right click flatten that to audio and just work with it as an audio file. So that's basically Basically, the nice thing about freezing, it accounts for both possibilities. Does that person have that plugin or do they not? So literally, I recommend every single track that has a plugin on, and that includes plugin effects, such as Isotope Alloy, Trash, or a Reverb plugin, whatever it is. Freeze that channel, and then you'll know there won't be any issues if, say, that other person does or doesn't have that particular plugin. Makes sense? Cool. So that's all the preparation we need to do for our project. Crucially, just to sum up very quickly, collect all and save, just get in the routine of doing that. Okay. And then yeah, freeze out any tracks with any plugins at all on them. And then once we've done that, we've basically got two options for sending this to somebody else. One option, which is the simple one, is to simply navigate to that project folder that has everything in it. Notice there's the live set, which has all the information about the, the thing you're working on and then all the samples. Below that, we can just simply compress that into one thing by zipping it up, so compress dope tune. And now we have an actual file that we can send to somebody, which is pretty sweet. Or what we can do, um, I don't necessarily recommend this way, but it's an option, is under File Manager and then Manage Project. And what we can do, we can actually do Create Pack. And what that does is it allows you to save, bing, an ALP file, which is a Ableton Live pack. You can see it says ALP on the desktop here. And then what you do, you send that to somebody or they send it to you. You then double click it. It says, where do you want to open or install this project? You install it somewhere on your computer. You get all confused because then Ableton doesn't load up the project. You then have to go into open and then actually open up the thing that you've already installed somewhere else on your computer. So it's really confusing. But if someone does send you an ALP, basically, that is a project, although it's very confusing, so I'm not actually gonna run you through how it works. But it's worth saying, inside this ALP is actually a project. So yeah, but ignore that, let's, let's scratch that. Nope, like that. What we wanna do a lot simpler is, yeah, basically just compress up your main Ableton project file. Once you've done collect all and save and you've frozen all your channels with plugins, basically. So yeah, there you go. Boom, video, knowledge, information now, collaborate send stuff about and fill up the internet with songs about cats.